For what seems like a long time now, we have been reporting the apparently endless shortages that U.S. producers, retailers, developers, and many other businesses have been facing over the past couple of years. Today, we decided to share the view of those who are actually inside the industry and see problems compounding on a daily basis. The supply chain crisis is a very complex issue that affects each and every one of us, and the longer it persists, the more harm it brings to our lives, our society, and our economy. In a recent expose, the financial and economic writer and analyst Wolf Richter shared the realistic and revealing observations of an Ohio-based manufacturer whose company operates in several states about the ongoing supply chain chaos. Todd Miller, the CEO of Isaiah Industries, a company that produces metal roofing shingles for residences and commercial buildings and then sells them under several brands such as Classic Metal Roofing Systems in North America, Japan, and the Caribbean, has recently sent a letter to Richter's blog Wall Street in which he explained that the supply chain system is broken. Miller describes that over the past decade, he has seen several situations where raw material supplies, especially metal, were very tight and led to disruptions in the company's operations. However, we've never seen anything like we're experiencing now as it goes beyond just metal supply, he said. Today, the industry's bottlenecks are affecting the supplies of pretty much everything. Shortages started to accelerate after businesses were forced to shut down during the first wave of infections in 2020, Miller remembers. At that time, the leading metal mills, where he used to buy steel, aluminum, and copper, were closed, and production never returned to the same levels. Once the consumer demand for virtually everything under the sun started to accelerate wildly, mills were caught with shortages and significant delays and backlogs developed, a situation that is yet to be rectified, he explained. Generally, consumers are understanding of the price increases, but now delays and shortages threaten our ability to meet consumer needs. We're currently running about a 60-day backlog on orders, the bulk of which we're waiting for raw materials to arrive. Historically, our backlog was a couple of weeks at the most, Miller added. The days of being able to place orders and know that we will receive the supplies we need when we need it are long gone. Manufacturers now tell us how much they can sell us, and even at that, they're often delayed on shipments. It really is not supposed to work this way. The system is broken, he said. The problems faced by his company are similar to what many other businesses have been experiencing in recent months. The biggest worry, however, is how these disruptions are affecting one industry all of us rely on, the food industry. At this point, economists are coming forward en masse to warn that the lack of effective government action on supply chain issues will make empty shelves the new normal all across the country. Although the new administration issued some measures intended to ease port congestion, those weren't nearly enough to cover the full extent of the problem. In a recent letter sent to the White House, over a dozen economists from several states urged the federal government to take stronger and more decisive action to repair the country's supply chains and keep food on grocery store shelves. The letter highlighted reports and pictures of sparsely stocked shelves at grocery stores, which some in the industry describe as a growing problem. At a time when grocery stores are seeing shortages of basics like meats, fruits, and vegetables, your government's lack of action undoubtedly cause unnecessary harm and food insecurity and have the potential to make empty shelves the norm in grocery stores across the U.S., the letter reads. All over the nation, food retailers are struggling with worsening labor and product shortages that can potentially threaten America's food security. The latest wave of confirmed virus cases has left a dent in the labor market, as millions of workers have been calling in sick 
The new protocols are reinstituted on food manufacturing plants. In January, The Economist estimated that employee absenteeism had hit about 30% of staffers at some stores. Now that number is over 50% and is continuing to rise by the day. If the situation worsens, small and medium-sized grocery stores won't be able to stay open, which will compromise food security in rural and remote areas that depend on independent grocers, they warned. One grocery store owner said that the shortage of workers is putting his business on the edge of closure. He said, if we have to keep sending people home, at a certain point, stores are not going to be able to operate. Given that most grocers rely on just-in-time delivery, even one day of bad weather can cause delays and aggravate shortages. Other issues include a severe shortage of truck drivers here in the U.S. and across the border in Canada. Over the past few weeks, Canadian truckers have halted deliveries as they protest against health mandates and poor working conditions. As a result, our farmers are having difficulties exporting goods across the border, while U.S. suppliers are having trouble importing goods from Canada. The issue is feeding on itself and adding a lot of pressure to the food supply of both nations. The president of Canada's Independent Grocers Association, Gary Sands, says that the recent demonstrations that have been paralyzing the country are causing massive delays, especially with the supply of fruit and vegetables from California. Sands noted that many Canadian grocers are short nearly 40% of their usual stock of a variety of products. It's not just the produce aisle that's experiencing shortages. Soup, cereals, and cleaning supplies are all running lower than normal, he added. Meanwhile, in the United States, where shoppers have been sharing videos of completely depleted stores, the rate of -of out-of-stock supplies is nearing 60% on average. The truth is that the truck driver shortage is an issue that has never been properly addressed. We can get millions of containers filled to the brim with goods coming from China and around the world, but if there are not enough truck drivers to distribute and deliver them to stores all across the country, then we'll have to get used to seeing empty shelves for a long, long time. In Canada, there's a shortage of 20,000 truckers, while in the U.S. the industry needs at least 80,000 new truckers to meet the demand. It seems unlikely we will ever get there. According to U.S. Express, one of the nation's largest truckload carriers says the sector is headed for a shortage of 160,000 drivers and the need for 1 million new drivers over the next few years. Part of the problem erupted as the Great Resignation trend and the new outbreaks emerged last year. Trunkers started to leave the profession altogether by the hundreds of thousands in 2021. Even though a truck driver can earn up to $100,000 per year, it's a very tough way to make a living. They're on the road most of their life. They often have families they cannot see for months at a time. Stopping at rest stations, local diners, and low-quality motels leave them susceptible to the virus while their cargo may get stolen. Truckers frequently find themselves stuck at small tines in the middle of nowhere, far from family and friends who would otherwise help them, a situation that was not in the initial job description. Many truck drivers also cope with the burden of soaring gas prices, insurance, and maintenance costs, which end up reducing the amount of money they take back home. And considering that the U.S. job market is short on 11 million positions, many truckers simply decided to leave the industry and try something new. If nothing is done to stimulate job growth in the sector, no matter how many supplies we can import, they won't be delivered and prices and inflation will continue to skyrocket. The situation is making it impossible for small producers to send their products to stores across the country and across the border. Growers of perishable produce on the West Coast are amongst the hardest hit. Today, 
They're paying nearly triple the trucking rates they used to pay last year to ship things like lettuce and berries before they spoil. Prices are ranging between $18,000 and $22,000 per trip. All in all, the consumer goods industry is missing around 120,000 workers, out of which only 1,500 jobs were added last month, as the latest data released by the National Grocers Association has shown. The agency also highlighted that many of its grocery store members were operating with less than 50% of their workforce capacity. On the other hand, consumers are still hoarding groceries as they fear more shortages will emerge in the coming weeks. Demand over the last five weeks has been as high or higher than it had been in March 2020, when the first event of panic buying was reported in the US. In recent days, Snow and ice storms that snarled traffic for hours along the East Coast also disrupted food deliveries headed for grocery stores and distribution hubs. Those delays rippled across the country, further delaying the shipment of fruit and vegetables with a limited shelf life. And while growers with perishable produce are forced to pay inflated shipping rates to attract truckers, producers of shelf-stable items are choosing to wait for backlogs to ease. That's why the supply of canned goods, sodas, and snacks is not being restocked. These producers are not willing to pay double or triple the freight because their goods don't go bad within a few days. They try to save money where they can in order to keep prices low for consumers, but that doesn't mean these decisions come without a cost. In an interview with Bloomberg, PBG Industries Inc. CEO Michael McGarry described a day in the life of a plant manager in the middle of a health crisis-induced labor shortage. He says, the toughest job right now is a plant manager. They wake up in the morning, check their phone to see how many people call off sick, then they get to work. They go through the dark area to see how many trucks did not get picked up, then they go to the receiving area, then find out what didn't come in that was supposed to, and then they move it into the plant and the supply chain people are telling me they're gonna have to make smaller batches because of the lack of raw materials. And then the sales team is telling them, oh my goodness me, if we don't get supplies out the door, here's how many customers we're gonna impact. So by the time they get to their desk, before they even have a morning meeting, they've had to overcome a number of issues. If there was any doubt remaining before, now it's clear that the US labor and supply chain nightmare is here to stay. And this crisis is far from over. In fact, a resilient survey found that supply shortages rocketed 88% last month and rose 452% year over year Resilink said the top six disruptions were factory shutdowns, workforce disruptions, leadership transitions, and raw material shortages. The conditions are spurring nations worldwide to look after themselves, hoarding locally sourced raw materials. This will further negatively affect the supply chain as exports decline and countries that rely on those exports face shortages, the firm noted. Resilink monitors and maps risk events for the supply chain, and just last year, it sent out 491 shortage alerts covering semiconductors, plastics, paper, and raw materials. All of these choke points on our supply chains will definitely make conditions a lot more complicated this year. It appears that the prophecy that few heard and no one believed has finally come true. Shortages will become commonplace in the world's wealthiest country, and the supply and demand imbalances we are witnessing are sowing the seeds for economic chaos in the coming months. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and please subscribe.